This is a replication and modification of the emitter base Jewel Thief driver circuit Tin Man has showed on his videos recently. He's driving the LED between the emitter and base. Some things that I noticed with this circuit I'm driving this with a uh, AAA battery and all these tests I'm going to show and it, the circuit won't run without a momentary contact between collector and base. Now it might start up on its own using the power supply but I've noticed with the power supplies you can hear ringing in the components of the power supply so there's some kind of oscillation going back and forth between the circuit. I need to limit the current going in here. I have a 47 ohm resistor here because if I let the full current go through the frequency goes too high and the oscillation stops, it shuts down. The other thing is this circuit will run without the LED in there and when you connect the LED in the power in drops slightly. On the right side I have the power going in from the AAA battery and on the left is the power going out to the LED and I have the voltmeter across the LED. I have a 1N4148 diode coming off of the emitter. It's also one in the collector which I'll use later. I'll jump start this and the power in is nine and a half milliamps. So it's running without the LED connected. I connect the LED in series with the diode and there's one milliamp going through the LED and the power in dropped to about eight and a half milliamps. So I have 1.94 or 9.5 volts across the LED. This is what I'm calling a Jewel Thief stash charger. This is version 2. In all these different versions I'm using the same configuration with the charge battery in series with the LED and a diode. I added another meter here. The one in the back here is for the voltage across the LED and this meter here in the front is for the voltage across the AA battery which I'm going to be charging up from the AAA battery that's running it. So first we'll start off with the base to emitter connection which is version 2. And it's running about a little less than 9 milliamps going in and there's 1 milliamp going through the LED and you can see it is charging it up and it's the voltage is higher than the run battery. The LED is slightly less voltage across it. It's got the same current but voltage is 1.73 I think it was 1.94 without the battery. So now we'll go to the base to collector which is version 3. That's 8 milliamps of power in. 
base to emitter was 9 milliamps. This version 3, not shut off. This version 3, the base to collector uses the least amount of power in of all these versions. And you'll notice the LED has 2.12 volts going across it. The current's still 1 milliamp. The battery is charging up. At the end of this video, I'm going to drop the resistance of the power going in so we can see how fast this charges up. But I want to show these other ones first. I'll do version 4 which is base to positive of the run battery. Now the LED is showing a negative voltage. And 9 milliamps of power in, 1 milliamp through the LED. On this base to positive, I forgot the diode at the positive connection, that's why it was given a negative reading across the LED. So it's 1.92 volts. This is version 1, collector to the positive of the run battery. And this is also charging up. 1.23 volts in the battery right now. And the LED is showing 2.23 volts across. Uh, 1 milliamp going through the LED, and about 8.5 milliamps of power in. I'm going to change this back to the base to collector. This is the base to collector version 3. I'm going to use a incandescent light bulb to bypass the resistor on the power in. Take notice how much this charges up the charge battery. About two and a half milliamps going through the LED and 29 milliamps of power in. This is the version one with the collector to the positive of the run battery and I have the incandescent bulb jumping across the resistor. There's a higher voltage reading across the LED at 1.95 volts and there's two milliamps going through the LED and battery and the power in is 30 milliamps. Thanks for watching.